Hello, everyone. Good to see you. We will start in just a couple minutes as we admit more people. <clears throat> All right, Neezy, I went ahead and made you the host so you could admit more people as we begin. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Today and now, we're going to talk about closing high-value services. This is about ending the year strong. We've got just under 60 days to close whatever clients that we had intended on closing by the end of the year. And uh, hopefully, this webinar will help you um, close even more than you were expecting with a new level of confidence and uh, some new things to try in your sales conversation. So welcome, welcome. If you could please let me know in the chat where you're signing in from and everyone um, will have an idea of who is with us today. Go ahead and introduce yourself and say where you're from. I'm coming to you from Elmsford, New York, which is in Westchester. And that's uh, just north of New York City. It's a gorgeous sunny day here. All right. Yep. We've got Scott. Hey, Scott, coming from Chicago. Tara from Edmonton. Steve from Toronto. Great group here today. Yep. Greetings from Miami. Hello. John from Texas. A great group. Uh, we have some friends on here today. Um, so that is awesome to have you all here. And Natalie. Hey, Natalie from Calgary. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started talking about closing because I do believe that we have a lot to talk about today. First, introduce myself. Many of you know me, but for any of those who don't, um, this is me and this is uh, our amazing four-year-old miniature husky named Cody. He's my number one buddy. And uh, there is uh, us on Bear Mountain, actually, which is a gorgeous hiking spot here in Westchester, New York. My sales background. Uh, I started in my first commission-based sales role uh, seven years ago with Equinox Fitness. And it's, you know, today we're talking about closing high value services, right? And, and if you're familiar with the fitness, uh, fitness industry, there's nowhere higher value or more of a premium fitness membership than Equinox. So I really was proud of selling that product. And that is one of the great things about high value products, right? They give you that sense of pride that what you're selling will actually make a real impact in someone's life. So that was where I spent the majority of my sales uh, career over the past seven years. I spent five plus years as a regional sales manager. Um, I was known for leading turnaround teams. That was my favorite thing to do. Um, won awards multiple times for that. So taking one of the lower performing teams and uh, within a year we would become one of the highest performing teams out of a hundred plus in the entire company. And we did that three times. Um, for four years, I helped train at the corporate headquarters in New York City, over 1000 employees that includes salespeople, that includes executives. So that is my other passion. As much as I do love selling, I really love training and teaching, sharing knowledge, um, seeing that transformation in people, especially when it comes to sales. You know, sales is a learnable skill like so many other things and it takes practice, it takes dedication. 
I often like to compare it to playing a musical instrument because it, it kind of takes the same level of um, consistency uh, in, in trying to better yourself over time, right? You're never finished. If, you, if you're a mus musician, you're never finished as a musician. And if you're a salesperson, you're never finished as a salesperson. Earlier this year, I made an exciting transition during the pandemic. Uh, well, we're still in the pandemic during the quarantine time and uh, started working here at KO Advantage Group with Kim Orleski. And it has been an amazing uh, six plus months now. I can't believe how much time flies. Uh, it's definitely been the highlight of my year. And uh, I, I can't speak highly enough about what we do. And I know I'm definitely preaching the choir because so many of you are here uh, Part of our community as, as formal students of ours or um, informal students, sales knockouts, as we like to say. And who are we for those of you who are not familiar? We are a sales training company that focuses on giving you a sales process that's built on helping you connect with clients using emotional intelligence for high value deals, high value services, those who are selling the invisible, what do we really do? What do we really give you? We really give you more sleep. I think we could all use a lot more sleep uh, right now, especially today. So if I have tired eyes, I apologize. Um, but for those of you who are familiar with the news, um, that tells you all you need to know about why I do not have too much sleep. Um, but overall, we provide sleep to business owners and entrepreneurs who in the past didn't have a sense of confidence that they knew what deals were going to be closing, when, how often, were they going to meet their, uh, meet their revenue targets, were they going to make their profit margins. If there's no repeatable sales process that will lead to success, how can we have that confidence? And when you do have that confidence, what happens? You gain a sense of empowerment. You gain the empowerment to gain the right clients, to focus on the right clients who are going to be the ones to build a valuable relationship over the future and not just a short-term desperation transaction. That's what we want to avoid. And we want to avoid trying to sell to anyone with a pulse and a credit card. That is not what we're about here. Um, but even as we speak about closing high value services, that is not what we're going to go for. Um, and less anxiety and uncertainty, right? Which you know I, I mentioned before, um, what you can bring to your business when you do have confidence in your funnel, when you have confidence in your meetings, when you have confidence in your proposals and, uh, and the service you provide leads to even more referrals and testimonials. And uh, the cycle works as it should, right? We don't have to continuously climb uphill you know, we can, we can stand on that hill, we can, we can walk down that hill and uh, do so um, with, with, with eyes on our bigger goals for the future versus just trying to survive. We're going to start out now talking about business ownership. You know, we help entrepreneurs and small business owners, and I, I know not everybody on here is a business owner, but that's okay, right? Even if you're just coming from the sales standpoint, sales leadership standpoint. One of the most valuable things I was ever taught in my career, my sales career, was to act like an owner. Why? It's because an owner is going to, who more than the owner is going to believe in their product? Who more than the owner is going to go above and beyond and provide that amazing hand-to-hand -hand service? Because they know how much their business depends on it, their reputation, and taking those clients and getting the positive word of mouth. There's nothing more powerful you can do than have that sense of ownership. However, the fastest way to grow your business is to focus on high value services. We see so many make the mistake thinking they're going to start their businesses with a lower end service that you'd see on the, here on the pyramid and thinking they're going to grow their business to higher and higher. What we want to do is really the opposite. You know, we want to focus on high value deals from the for high value services from the beginning. What we'll end up with is lots of mid-level services. And then we have the option to build out our business with, with more uh, targeted and individualized, either super high-end premium options or less personalized, less individualized, lower-end options to now look, start looking at volume. However, we don't wait, there's no point of looking at volume until we have cash flow. Focusing on higher end and medium end services are what's going to create that cash flow for us to go towards the volume. 
we often come across, uh, you know, the wrong way to price in, in terms of entrepreneurs who are starting their business business and thinking about how they want to price their product. Um, you know, the, the most common thing that you'll see is someone saying, you know, I want to make this much uh, per hour, right? So how much do I want to make? And if I can take the amount of hours I want to spend and the amount that I want to make, that's going to be my price. What we're not considering, right, is all the other things other than the hours. It's not just about the time. It could be about the time to process, you're putting in prospecting. It could be about the time and the investments you're making in your marketing. It could be about the time you're spending commuting or traveling. Um, there's so many additional costs and then also opportunity costs. So there's, there's tangible additional costs that we're not considering. And then there's opportunity costs of, of the things we could have done uh, if we weren't commuting or if we weren't spending so much time creating content on social media. Pricing low also has another effect. And this is something you'll see in sales as well, right? People associate value with the amount they have to pay. If the pricing is too low, it's, we start to question, right? What's really wrong with the product? Is it everything they say it is? And also like, how can something that's, that's so uh, how cheap, for lack of a better word, really make an impact on my life? How can it really change things? We all know that you, know, you get what you pay for and you have to make investments uh, to actually realize real results. And uh, that's definitely something that you know, in my time as at Equinox, you know, we had to, uh, it was a great challenge to rise to, to be the highest cost provider in the space. But we knew again that we were putting the value behind it. And once people saw the value, the referrals would take care of themselves. The first question you wanna ask if you're pricing or just preparing to sell a high value product, what do my clients or ideal potential clients ultimately get when they use our service? A great question to ask. And if you have some uh, initial thoughts or you have a go-to and you know, feel free, go ahead and put it in the chat. What do your clients ultimately get when they use your services? And yeah, and John, and the mental costs, good point. That's something we don't think about uh, 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 often. That is like truly the invisible. Tara, funding from banks, excellent, right? Question, what, why does the funding matter? What does the funding allow someone to do? What are they gonna get post-funding? The right way to price questions now that we want to think about. What is this project worth to the client when completed? What, are the, what is it actually worth? When we apply the, the opposite of the opportunity cost, like, you know, what is the, the, the opportunity return on investment? How much time will be saved? How much more revenue can they generate after using your product or service? Yes, they're going to pay for it, but how much, what does their opportunity look like? How many more clients will it enable them to work with, right? These are the things that our clients or our prospects are gonna get after, ultimately, after they use, make that change and use a product or service. It's that after effect of where the value is. You know, we're gonna talk about these high, closing high value services, but if we can't bring that, bring that value out into the air, give it oxygen, make it real, make it visible, have someone visualize and understand that's where we get into trouble. That's where deals stall. That's where tough negotiations happen. And it becomes about price, price, price. For example, the value of time, time savings, not enough to determine the entire value that we provided for our client. What will they do with the additional time savings and how will it impact their business? Right? So, so many, so many uh, of us, you know, when we're, when we're thinking about what we're providing, right? Like what are the universal motivators? There's, it's like time, money, happiness. The question is, what are those motivators going to allow someone to achieve? What is going to be the, 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 the outcome of using that extra time? What is going to be, what does life look like when we have the more happiness? And if we're saving money or making money, 
when we, when we use that money as a vehicle, what, what is going to happen next? That something next is what we want to clarify, and then we're going to create value. However, it's not up to us to tell the client what their return on investment is. It's up to us to ask the questions and have the client tell us. Questions are the way we're going to now discover the value and the way we're actually gonna magnify it. So we're not only gonna discover the value, we're gonna magnify with questions. We want to be creating value constantly, right? This is from the very beginning of our sales process. And even again, going back to the pricing, right? We're keeping it in mind, even as we price our product, that is the bedrock. That is the foundation is the value provided. We're going to create value though, as we go in the sale, in the sales process, value will actually be a product. We're going to initiate this from the very beginning, from uh, even from a cold call, even from an elevator pitch even from an email. We want to think of every single sales interaction as tra trading time, energy, attention for value. We're asking for attention. We're asking for time. We need to be trading value. That is how we keep a sales process moving. When there's value in every conversation and value at each step, the sales process will continue to move. It will not stall when high amounts of value are provided. Next question. A hard question to grapple with. And some of you might be familiar with this question who have joined me before, but I don't think this is a question we can ask enough. Should be asked every day. Would our client or prospect be willing to pay for the experience created in your sales call or your sales meeting? Let me know in the chat, yes or no, and why if you're feeling ambitious. Would your client or prospect be willing to pay for your sales call? for the experience, for the meeting. Okay, good, Trevor. I think they would. I hope so. Tara, maybe if they're working on something similar and don't know how to solve it themselves, correct? Yeah. And John, yeah, if they're definitely, if they're the right market product or fit, super important to have that qualified and have that buyer persona clear because you know you could ha you could have a great experience but someone's not going to receive value that's not relevant to them and trevor yeah providing a fair bit of useful information uh yeah providing information a lot of times information is value on our call so good one of the number one ways we're going to do this is asking the right questions asking questions that get people thinking about opportunities and potentials that they weren't either thinking about before or realizing were possible. Ultimately, when you create the art of possibility is where you create value. And then if you look at the tactics and techniques of, of the questioning, now we can actually create a strategy. Two main types of questions though that you wanna focus on are open-ended questions. Open-ended questions that start with what, how, why, these are going to help us discover information. These are going to get us answers that are more than just a yes or no. These are going to get people talking, get people thinking. The majority of our questions should be open-ended questions. And I challenge everyone to start listening to how many open-ended questions you're really asking. If you record your Zoom calls, look, look back on them. Maybe record a sales call. Grab a friend, role play and practice. We'll give you that opportunity at the end of this meeting, uh, this webinar. Because the number one mistake I hear from salespeople when I'm coaching and business owners is they understand the concept of asking an open-ended question. Everybody understands the concept. Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. But then when you listen, you'd be surprised how many are you, do you, should you, or could use do you really hear? And actually, you'll find that 80-20, many times you're thinking you're asking 80% open-ended questions. You're really asking 80% closed-ended questions. That said, closed-ended questions are not bad. They are used strategically for confirmation and for moving the process forward. So when you are discovering, you are gaining that information, having the client tell you the important things that are important to them in their business, the things that are going to help you now provide that value, 
you want to confirm asking closed-ended questions. So you're on the same page. That is also how you build rapport. Rapport is about commonality. And they don't, you know, a lot of people hear commonality and they think, oh, I'm from New York, you're from New York. We have commonality. On a very surface level, maybe the commonality and rapport I'm talking about is you're giving me information, you're giving me a perspective, an opinion, and I'm now reflecting it back to you to show that I understand. And when you confirm that you understand, now we have commonality. If you look up the word rapport, it is the establishing of a harmonious relationship. That is what you're doing when you're asking these open-ended questions and then confirming with closed-ended questions. If I heard you right, you're saying that X, Y, Z, is that correct? Once we have agreement from the customer on the problem, uh, once we have agreement, then we can move forward. And you know, you want the end goal is you want to get a that's right. For anybody who's read um, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss, you know, he talks about that. And, and Scott is familiar from the hospice negotiation world. You know, you want to get the that's right. Now we have rapport. So two things we're going to focus on as we're open uh, asking these open-ended questions. We're going to focus on the prospect's ideal state. Number one, you could call it the ideal state. You could call it the dream state. Number two, the consequences of staying in their current state. Number one, ideal state. Number two, the consequences of staying in their current state. We're going to dig deep. We're going to talk about destination versus current on one level, right? So the, the destination, that ideal state, that dream state, what are the client's goals and aspirations? And please, please, I beg you, if there's anything else you start to listen for as you now start new sales conversations or look back on old ones, are you actually asking what's quite, just quite simply, what are their goals? What are the goals are the, is the number one question you can ask. It will help you qualify. It will help you realize what is their ideal state. What are the goal? What what are the current goals? Whether it's sixty days from now, six months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you can choose depending on the conversation. But at a bare minimum, we have to be asking what are the goals. The current though is the other side of that. But wh where are they now? Where are you at with your business now? Because what we're going to do is we're now going to compare and contrast. And there's the gap, right, of where they could be. Suddenly you help people realize where they could be. But that is not enough. That is where most people stop. And then they have trouble closing high value services. They think, oh my gosh, I'm so good. I deserve a pat on the back because I helped someone realize where they could be. Valuable, yes. Enough, no. We have to go further. We have to build on that. Why is that important? Why is that important to them or their business? What will they be able to accomplish or not accomplish when they're there? Who else will this affect? What else will this affect? And then getting them into the state of being there. Bring them there ahead of time. How will this feel when you're there? Or how does it feel to be in this current this, this current state that you're in now? What more will be impacted? And who will they become or who will their business become? And that is, that is where we want to go. That is how far we want to evolve the emotional conversation. This pyramid is your compass. This is what you wanna start with when you're closing high value services. And we'll share these slides at the end. You can take a picture or you can just write down the chronological order of what I'm about to describe. At the very bottom level, we're starting with look or think questions, right? We're, start, we're gonna start logical. We can all meet on that page at first. The look, think questions. You know, what do you think about this? What does your ideal state look like? What are your goals? What do you think about the current state of your business? What do you think could improve? What's your biggest challenge, right? What is the biggest challenge you're facing? It's like a different way to say what's the biggest challenge you're currently looking at. This is the one level of questions and this is where we will start. Then once we've established 
what the ideal state looks like, what the challenges look like. Then we can move into, now we wanna move up the pyramid into the feeling questions. How will it feel when you reach that ideal state? How does it feel to be struggling so much right now? How would you, you know, how do you think it would feel to change that? How much confidence do you have in X, Y, or Z? And that is another go-to question. So if you're selling, you know, um, digital marketing services, you know, how confident you are, how confident are you in your digital marketing presence? should be a go-to question. How does that make you feel? And ultimately, once we've established feel, now we can go on to the next step. And now we see the beautiful view. We're taking them with us. B questions. And the reason why B questions are so powerful and B, are, B questions are at the top of the pyramid is because B questions are about identity. Who would you be if you are able to reach these amazing goals. What will your business become when you have this next shiny opportunity? Again, starting with look and, look and think questions, moving into feeling questions, and then moving into be questions, identity questions. How will your role change? Maybe you're not talking to a business owner. How, you know, what, we, what do you think you're, so like, let's say you, you, you are incredibly successful with this project. What's next? What's next? And now we're getting towards the closing and making a proposal. Because if we've been successful enough to establish value in every conversation, if we've been successful enough to ask our open-ended questions, our closed-ended questions, move from look and think questions to feel questions to be questions, and we now have them imagining what's next, or what does that ideal state really feel like, then the question that you ask to start closing the sales cycle, when would you like to see that result by? This is the most powerful way to create a sense of urgency, not false urgency, but true urgency. Great. Who will you be? What's next? Awesome. When would you like to see that happen by? What do you think the answer is when you ask this question? Let me know in the chat. When you do ask this question after you've gone on that emotional journey, when would you? Awesome. When would you like to see that result by? What do you think is going to be the answer? Tara, I'm sure if you do it properly, yes, they say as soon as possible. Oh, and Trevor, yesterday. Yes, yes. So the answer is going to be as soon as possible or a lot of times now. I mean, now or yesterday. When would I like to see that by? Yesterday. Yes. And another plus one for yesterday. Exactly. Right? And this is not to be confused with when would you like to start? When would you like to start this? When would you like to begin this? No, 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 no. People don't want to start. People don't want to begin. People want to have the result. It's like losing weight. When do you want to, when, you know, when do you want to be thinner? <laughs> uh, four months from now. No. I mean, I already want to be thinner. I wanted to be thinner six months ago. And I procrastinated and sat on my butt. And now we're going in the wrong direction. And a great final question to add to this, right, is what, okay, awesome. What questions do you have for me? What final questions do you have for me? And then when you have the affirmative, now we can start to make the proposal. We want to be making the proposal when we have at least an 80% chance that the answer is going to be yes. No, no less. Think of it like a marriage proposal. <laughs> 
how, how, if, if we are going to get down on one knee and lay it all on the line, do we do that if we think there's like a 25% chance the person's going to say yes? And normally, we're pretty sure that the answer is going to be yes, at least 80%. And how do you know if there's an 80, 80 if, if it's an 80% chance? It's an excellent question. So if you've been able to, you know, go on, have this conversation and you have strong, compelling answers to what are their goals? If you have strong, compelling answers to what does the ideal state look like? What will it feel like? Who could they be? And when would you like to start by the answer is now or yesterday, then you can feel pretty sure if you come all this way, then you should feel 80% confident so long as they are still weak qualified. And we talk about BANT, right? So budget, authority, need, and timeline. So you want to check all those boxes as well. Hopefully you're reaching out to a buyer persona that is already kind of in, in the game there in terms of budget authority, need, and timeline. If they want to see that result now, and if they have no other questions, and if they're, you know, a lot of times when you get towards the end of the, the sales cycle, like, and you've built that value and you've got people so like emotionally involved, they're not even trying to fight you. It's like, they're, you know, the, they, they just like, how do I move forward is the only question. Great. We definitely have more than 80% there. Mistake made with proposals. Don't email them. Don't send them. We're talking about high value products and services here. This is its own separate meeting to do either on the phone to walk someone through or over Zoom, virtually, person to person, face to face, so that questions can be asked, things can be clarified in the moment, and then we can boom take action, make a decision, move forward or not move forward. But if we send, and now we have to wait for response, that creates a necessary friction. Also, people tend to get cold feet at the very, 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 very end. We want to be in a conversation when that happens, because we ultimately want to bring them back when we're making this proposal, which is actually what our next webinar will be. I'm actually going to go through the six side proposal specifically how to do it. So I won't go into too much detail here, but ultimately in the proposal, we're going to bring them back to that ideal state. We're going to keep that top of mind because when the cold feet sets in, we need, we need to bring them back to that dream state. We need to get them feeling those positive emotions. So we want to avoid emailing the proposal. Anything that matters, put care into it, offer your time, your energy, um, you know, your excitement, your enthusiasm as well. You know, you should be, we should be excited for our prospects. We just asked them all these questions, took them up this emotional pyramid, helped them solve what's next. Like we should be excited. Like, like I am, I'm, a, I'm happy for this person. Like they're making a positive change, right? Let's do this together. And for those of us who are not comfortable uh, on the phone or tend to be more comfortable with email, you know, I encourage you, I challenge you to, make it a priority to overcome that. And it won't take as much work as you may think. There's a Harvard Business Review study that came out this month. And they found that people overestimate how awkward or uncomfortable it actually is to be on the phone or to have a phone call, as opposed to an email or a text. This is true. So they had, you know, one group like text and email, they had another group making calls, um, they evaluated, and they did this not only for people calling their friends and family, they did this for people, they looked at this when people were reaching out to strangers. And in both instances, people dramatically inflated the uncomfortability or the uh, awkwardness that they, they thought they were going to feel that in the end, when it happened, wasn't real. Get on the phone, start making those phone calls. It's like anything else. You get used to it, you get conditioned, you get better. And then you start to look forward to actually talking to people. Like I, I don't look forward to sending emails. And I know for myself, I can send 60 emails prospecting and not get a meeting. I can call one person and get a meeting and have more fun doing it. 
Talking about the clothes, four different types of clothes to consider. Number one, and always the go-to, is the assumptive, right? If you've made it all the way this far and nobody's stopping you, there's no reason to, 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 to feel like you know, there's any uncertainty whether we're going to move forward here or not. The clothes should be the logical, the logical next step to the sales process when we've come this far. Assumptive. Suggestion is another, is another way, right? If you have to, right? You know, you're, you are the expert. You, you have the opportunity to provide that ex expertise. Reiterate why it's the best solution for that person. And it might come down to that. And it often will, right? You, you do, sales is kind of like a, a transfer of emotion. It's a transfer of, of certainty, of confidence. We, 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 a lot of times it's, you know, that's why it takes a salesperson to give someone that confidence. Options. Options are very successful as well. If, if we're not feeling super strong about being assumptive, oh, you can't go wrong by giving people options, right? Package A, package B, giving three options, knowing that someone is most likely going to take the middle option is fine. Um, but definitely make sure that options are provided. People like freedom of choice, just not too many options because then we have just decision paralysis. And there's urgency, right? Like we talked about real urgency before, but you can, you know, use the, I don't want to say false urgency, but like limited time offer, you know, the whole scarcity concept, things are running out, have to act fast. Of course you want to use that sparingly, especially when it comes to premium or higher value services, you know, along with that comes premium and higher value clients. And nobody wants to feel like they're being, you know, misled or played with, um, or being sold, you know, right. People don't want to feel the pressure. And, and, and feel like they're being sold, like people want to buy and having a sense of autonomy, knowing that like this is a choice they're making because they want to make it. Always have a closing question. A closing question should incite a yes answer or an affirmative continuation. And once we ask the closing question, shut up. We don't say anything. Let silence do the work. Sometimes people need a moment to process. That silence might be harder on us. It might feel like it's taking an eternity, but it's not for them. Oftentimes, as cliche as it sounds, the first person to speak loses. Again, going back to that marriage proposal, right? You get down on one knee. Will you marry me? That is the last thing that's said. You don't say, don't forget, like, I'm a really good guy. And I said, I've like, really spent a lot of time uh, doing dishes in the kitchen just to, help, just to help you make your decision. No, you're not talking afterwards. You're just asking the question, waiting for the response. We don't want to talk ourselves out of the deal. Many, we, we have a greater chance in sales of talking ourselves out of deals than we do talking ourselves into deals. There might be objections. There often will be objections want to make sure we're ready and comfortable for them. Like, like I mentioned earlier, people tend to have cold feet at the end of the, the process at the very, very end though. This is something you see in psychology. There's, you know, the human mind approach forces, avoid forces. This is, if you want to understand how people behave, look at approach and avoid forces. And the way the psychology goes is in the beginning, the, the attraction forces, or the approach forces are more dominant. So what I mean by that is think of like going swimming in a pool, right? Or going to the beach. It seems like a great idea, right? Right off the bat. And, it, and it, you know, it is a great idea, but like it's, it seems so attractive, right? Oh my gosh, I want to go. I can't wait to go. Then we get to the pool. I don't know if you're like me, but I, this is me. We get to the pool. I'm excited to go swimming. But then when it's actually time to get into the water, that's where the avoid forces, they set in at the last minute. Suddenly they become more real because I'm thinking, how cold is that water? That water is looking pretty cold. I'm dipping my toe in to see how cold it is. You know, you might even like get in like up to your knees and then like cringe and like get in up to your waist. That's because we're now being dominated by avoid forces. We weren't thinking about those things when we made that awesome plan to go to the beach or go to the pool. Same thing happens in sales. Seems like a great idea in the beginning, all the way through the process. Last minute, fear, uncertainty, loss, loss aversion, 
So we want it, moral of the story is be ready for objections, never be surprised. Be ready to respond with a question. The goal is to keep the prospect talking and keep the conversation going. The person who asks the questions owns and controls the conversation. More than any other time, this is where we want to keep the conversation going. And a great way to do that. We're not going to dive into uh, objection handling. That could be its own uh, training session. But I do want to share with you feel felt found. And this is a great go-to way to overcome objections or challenges. It's very, and, and I love it because of its simplicity. I love how basic it is. And it is a great way to overcome an objection or challenge with built-in empathy. You, we spent all this time establishing this rapport, this commonality, this value with our prospects. Now is not the time to be abrasive and care more about the sale than we do for them. Feel felt found goes, you know, I completely understand the way you feel. I co or, or, you know, uh, so many other people have, uh, have, have uh, felt like that. Many people I talk to feel the same way. Um, others have felt that way. However, what they ultimately found was, and now this is where we overcome with the positive vision instead of the fear and the uncertainty, right? We found, we, you know, ultimately we find that when people do make the investment, the only thing they regret is not doing it sooner. People find out that the return on investment was way greater than they thought it, than they thought it even could be, you know, and, and you be, will, will be amazed at how well this works. You know, John is one of our students. He's on here and I know this helped him close a deal recently. The client was on the fence not sure, uh, trying to put it off until January, right? Which is what everybody's doing right now is what is, you know, any excuse in the book, you know, January is a big easy one right now though. And, you know, he used Phil Fell Found in the conversation to close the deal on the spot. I understand how you feel. So many others have felt the same way. However, what they found was We are reaching the end here, um, but I ask you all, what is your dream state? What are your goals? When you achieve those goals, what will that allow you or your business to become? You deserve it. I believe, and, and thank you for joining me here. If you join me, um, you are a friend and you deserve your dream. Knowledge is a great first step and that's what we share today. However, education is not application. Who's gonna be your support system? Who's gonna be your team to hold you accountable and to help you apply this knowledge? There it is right there. Application is not education. Going back to like sales is like being a musician, right? There's no amount of knowledge that can allow you to become a great piano player. I can, I can, I can spend four hours telling you about piano. You sit down to the keys, you're not, you know, <laughs> you're not going to be able to play. It takes practice. It takes application. Those, of, those who have joined us and, and some of you are on here, so I love that we're providing you value um, even outside of our formal training. And that's, that's what we love to do. We are happy to do that. And, um, you know, hopefully in the end, you know, the value received is just like a, a drop in the pond compared to um, what, you know, you're able to to achieve for your business or with your sales. Um, you know, Rob here, the longer you wait, that's missing revenue you're missing out on, right? Well, I guess what, how valuable would the ability to close more high value premium clients, what would that mean to your business? What would that mean to you? Cameron says, it's like magic. It's like magic, right? Having these skills, I mean, t today was just, you know, we can, we can go on and on. Um, when we really invest the time though, imagine if you spent an, a, instead of an hour once in a while, imagine if you spent 90 minutes per week focusing on these specific skills to close more high value services. 
And we, you know, we are happy to help you and be a partner on that journey. The meeting has just, the meeting link has been shared by Neezy here in the chat. Book, book some time with us, book some time with myself. Like let's really talk about how we can get you more premium clients by the end of the year. Today we shared knowledge. Let's talk about application. Yes, later on, if you decide to train with us, we're more than happy to have that conversation. But ultimately, here's what we know. If we can provide value and help you literally close more deals, then more than likely than not, <laughs> that we're going to want to continue that pattern, right? And we, now we've seen what even just 20 minutes, 20 minutes of a deep dive specifically tailored to your challenges or your opportunities as a business owner or a salesperson, what that can do for you. Obviously, subscribe, and now we're talking a revolution, right? I mean, what do you really want? Are you looking for a small change or are you looking for a revolution? I really feel like you undervalue the course for the value received. Yes, I hope, hopefully that's the way everyone feels by a lot, you know? We are, we are determined to provide way more value than we um, receive in, in what we're charging. We're, we're happy to share slides with you. Feel free to follow this link. And, and our final quote, I will leave you with this quote. This is our number one mission, uh, mission and value here at KO Advantage Group. We believe you can have everything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. And I'm confident that you all believe that as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And I'm here to help. I'm here to help you get what you want, realize your goals through sales. That has been the mission for my life. Let's talk sales. Book some time on my calendar. Love it. Yes. Yep. John saw $700 monthly after meeting for 20 minutes. I look forward to speaking further with all of you. Uh, and I thank you all so much for joining me uh, and listening. Uh, I hope you found value. Uh, I, ho I hope and I look forward to the opportunity to create more value together. So thank you so much, everyone. Hopefully this was a nice distraction from you know everything else going on in the world. And uh, let's close some more deals between now and the end of the year. Let's ride into 2021 with with strength and with momentum and with velocity. Thanks so much, everybody. Talk to you soon.